So this week we've got confirmation of that spy shot that we were sent in a few weeks back. It's that new Cervelo S5. And highlights of that include a 13% stiffer head tube and a 25% stiffer bottom bracket. And <laughs> loads more of that to come. So first up, we're gonna talk about the confirmation of that Instagram post that was posted a couple of weeks back. And it's the announcement of the Cervelo S5. And we're gonna go into what's the difference about that bike and its predecessor. Well, first up, it's a disc brake only bike, which is gonna be, well, controversial to some people out there. But why have they gone for disc brakes only then? Well, I reckon it's because the previous bike was built for 23 millimeter tires in mind. Whereas the current trend these days is to go 25s and bigger. So I assume that that frame couldn't actually fit 25s very comfortably, if at all. Mm. So this one can fit up to 28 millimeters, no problem at all, because the distance between the chain stays is in fact 38 millimeters. So you've got five millimeters either side, even if you're running 28s. So now let's look at the details of this bike. The head tube is 13% stiffer than its predecessor. And now listen to this, the bottom bracket is a whopping 25% stiffer than its predecessor. That's a big number, isn't it, really? If you think about it, you know, whenever a bike manufacturer or a bike brand releases something and they say, right, we've made it this much stiffer, it amazes me how they can do it. But I suppose manufacturing processes, that kind of thing, that's what does it. Yeah, incredible. Now yeah. let's talk about the geometry. The trail has been lengthened and the bottom bracket has been lowered to improve stability on the bike. And there's also, they've come out with five ranges of forks to, that, to basically help all different riders get the specific position they want on the bike and to improve handling. Yeah, which is kind of unusual really. A lot of bike manufacturers out there, they either give you two or three different fork options across the range. Mm. But with five across each, you know, each individual size has its own specific fork. It means that no rider is, well, left short changed, I guess. Yeah. You know, that's probably the easiest way to describe it. Now, of course, that stem, that is unusual looking, isn't it? It's very unusual. Yeah, because it's kind of like a V which goes out, connects to an aero profiled handlebar, which together with some quite clever shims, mm. means you can actually rotate the handlebars up to five degrees, which is probably enough for most riders out there, as opposed to a standard integrated aero bar setup where you're lumbered really, aren't you? In yeah, one position. and you're kind of just stuck in that cockpit position. So it's really cool that Cervelo have done that little bit of a change. Yeah. But the initial views, when you look at it, it does look like it's higher than the frame. And, it, and when I looked at it first, I was like, how am I going to get low on that front yeah. end? It doesn't look fast either, it does it? It doesn't, does it? No. But actually, it's the same height as its predecessor. So you're not actually raising yeah. raising or getting higher on the bike, you're actually staying the same Still as Still as slammed as ever. And yeah, also exactly. tests show that by using one of those style stem and bars, you know, this split style is actually faster than a standard conventional stem. More aero. Yeah, just the way the air moves around it. I mean, I'm not gonna disagree with it because I'm not in a wind tunnel, I don't have the facts, but I always thought that something like that, which was trapping the air, would be slower, but yeah, yeah it's, it's not. And it's also got all those integrated details that, well, many of the aero bikes nowadays do have. Yeah, all the cables and hoses, all of that hidden away nicely out of the wind. So what are we giving it then, John? Well, I don't know, I think it's a nice bike, yeah. yeah. I, I'm the same point of view. I think it's a cool bike. I think it's, it's a bit different. They're pushing the boat out. So yeah. I'd say, yeah. It's a yeah, cool because of those handlebars, you know what, I think it's lovely. Yeah. Also, confirming the rumor, that yeah, Cervelo are gonna be sponsoring Team Sunweb next year. Now staying with disc brakes, just loosely, well, it was actually interesting to see two world championships were won using disc brakes last weekend in Austria. So we had the under 23 winner and the women's what? elite winner, both won on disc brakes. So but there we are, there is some movement there from the Pro Peloton. More tech later. Last week, Ollie and I put the question to you. Which bits of retro tech do you want to see back on your bikes? And as ever, well, the comments flooded in. Yes, you guys did not disappoint us with all <sighs> your comments. And here's a few really that we've picked out that we absolutely love. First up, Bob Slawson, who says, Christoph Toe Clips. Uh, so Bob liked the feeling of being strapped onto the pedals. Can't remember ever being unable to get out of them when needed. Now, to be honest with you on that one, Bob, 
I used to find riding with toe clips absolutely terrifying. Uh, I, have you ever ridden with them? I've never ridden with toe clips. He's too and, young. Yeah, I don't think I'd want to, to be honest. No. They're so horrific. Exactly, and for those of you who are unaware of them, basically it was a standard pedal with a cage basically bolted onto them, and then a strap went through the cage and also through the pedal. You put your foot into the pedal and you would tighten up the strap and you were fixed in there until you loosened them. So strap in. Yeah. Literally. Yeah, so if you came to a crash on a corner in a race or just a crash in general, and you wanted to quickly get your foot out, you were unable to do so, and you just used to topple over, basically. Oh. So I don't know if there's a bit of sarcasm in there or not, Bob. Anyway, who yeah. else have we got? We got, I'm gonna push the laptop over here so I can oh. see a little bit. <laughs> Oscar Falstrom gives us another comment, and he says, basically everything that makes bike maintenance less of a faff, mechanical group sets, exterior cable routing and threaded bottom brackets. There we are, Oscar. A man after my heart there Ooh. with those suggestions. No, in all seriousness, I do love old school tech like that, you know, mechanical group sets. In fact, it's not even old school tech, is it? It's not. It's, it's still well and truly out there. It is. But I do, do love uh, advances in uh, technology as well. So, but yeah, you've got some classic You still like testing yourself, there. don't you? Oh yeah, of course, mm. yeah. Uh, next up, Phil Manithapo. Uh, would love to run tubulars if I had a team car following me wherever I go. Uh, <laughs> would, another thing is would price we and time to yeah. set up. You ever trained on tubulars? I, I, to be honest, I did actually. Uh, I risked it for a bit, yeah. um, uh, but then I thought better and I thought I better, on, a, on my training bike, I'd better just run clinches. Yeah, I it's used to go out easier. sometimes with yeah. tubulars, but I'd never venture that far away from home. I'd no. always carry a little can as well yeah. with some sealant in it and stuff, but. Yeah, it's true, yeah, the price and the setup of them. I mean, to be honest, it is just as quick to change a tubular tyre if it's pre-glued that's underneath your saddle yeah. as it is to change a clean tyre. Sometimes, haven't you found really hard to get it off when it's yeah, properly it glued on? Pre-stretched. Yeah. yeah, oh yeah, you always leave a little bit yeah. which is unglued, then you can easily get it out. So we've got another one from Myota BRG. Better retro, number one, free wheel cassettes were always assembled to your own sprocket tooth yeah, numbers were. in the bike shop rather than pre-assembled. Everyone used to have their own favorite gear ratios that they stuck to. Number two, seat posts with single Allen key bolts rather than two on the saddle rails. So much easier to adjust and more secure. That's very I true. I totally agree with yeah. you there. I, what idiot introduced the second bolt? I, mean, I don't agree with calling anyone an idiot, but I think that, uh, yeah, those old school free wheels where you could literally customize the you know, your ratios. I remember having 1422 or something like that when I was a junior, mm. it was some, something so close, racing out in Holland, you didn't need a widespread cassette or, or free wheel rather. And yeah, those single bolt oh, seat posts. They do make things so they, much easier. They were much easier, weren't they? And faffing around, especially if it's in an old position. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Gabriel Gonzalez, should I be proud or ashamed that every single thing that, uh, well, they mentioned, so Ollie and I last week, can still be found on my bike and I don't consider it retro. No, Gabriel, do not be ashamed or embarrassed, anything like that. It was tongue in cheek, like I think probably a lot of these comments are mm. as well. You know, there's nothing to be ashamed. Any bike is a cool bike in my eyes. Doesn't matter Agreed. what it is. Yeah. 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 Next, last question. Whoa, last comment. Yeah. Last comment. Last question. Last comment. Same thing. <laughs> Todd Taylor. The only thing I think was better in the past was the finish on components groups. Yeah. Components like crank arms used to be highly polished aluminium and looked like jewelry. <laughs> Today, most components are painted instead of being polished, and they just don't look as nice. Other than that, they can't think of anything they like better about their old bikes from back in the 80s or 90s. And you know what? I, I, ag agree. I agree 100% with that. You know, as much as I love old components and parts, I found that they just don't work as well. Yeah. You know, they don't. They don't stop you as well. They don't change gear as well. And yeah, but they did look. Absolutely they did. amazing. You know, I still lust after so many old bits. Of but it is when you look at, you know, when we look at sort of like bicycles now, but then when you look at old retro cars, there the finish is just incredible. Yeah. They put so much time into all the details. So yeah, the olden days just, I think, looked better. Yeah. I wonder if we'll be saying that though in years to come. Yeah, who knows? Yeah. Don't know. Anyway, more tech later on. Now, first up, our friends at ASOS have announced a new pair of shorts that are coming, and that's the S9 model. And do you know what, mate? They've taken six years to develop. Wow. And something which is super cool on this is that they're only using two bits of material on the main body of the shorts. 
So obviously the less panels, the better generally, isn't yeah, it? With shorts, because they're a bit more comfortable. And then they even feature roll bar technology. Now talk me through this, because this is an odd one for me. Yeah, basically there's, it's like a stabilization so that the chamois or the pad, whatever you want to call it, doesn't move around if you get out of the saddle, thrown around the bike, as well as putting through the extra force in the saddle with the cornering, that's which a, does happen, doesn't that it? Is, yeah, that's a really cool thing that they've added there because it means when you're riding, you're not finding the chamois in different places. So when you sit down, it's not uncomfortable. You have to keep getting out of the saddle to yeah. reorganize your chamois. So yeah, fair play to Asol. It's a really cool bit of kit there. Yeah. And they've also kept that really minimalistic, lightweight effect even going up the shorts, which is onto the bib straps. So fair play to them. They've put some work in and hopefully it's gonna be a really good product, but we're gonna to have to wait for it because it's not dropping until the beginning of next year. Yeah, still it's taken six years, so what's a few yeah. more months? Yeah. Now, let's go on to some uh, professional road tech then. Oh. From last week at the Professional Men's World Road Race Champs, two riders of Team Sky, so Gianni Moscon and uh, Michal Kiotowski, they were using a Wait pair for of lightweight wheels from German brand, lightweight, uh, and of course they are lightweight, so there we go. But what's so unusual about this is that most pro riders, they are contracted, obviously, or definitely, when they're racing for their trade team and training for their trade team, they have to use that team's equipment. But the exception is for things like the Olympic Games, uh, World Road Race Champs, European Champs possibly, that kind of thing, where they essentially have a free reign, they can choose their own equipment. So presumably they went for the lightweight wheels because that was a brutal course, yeah. wasn't it? So they won't be getting a telling off from Team Sky. Uh, I can imagine that maybe Shimano would be a little bit miffed that they weren't yeah. using their wheels for it. But anyway, it's good to see because we haven't seen a lot of riders do that lately. I remember back in the mid 90s, guys like Frank Van Den Brucker, they were actually going out and buying their own wheels to use in World Champs. I think I think that's super cool. I think it's really cool for a rider to be able to go to the something like the Worlds and be like, what can I what kind of tech or what kind of kit can I get that best fits that job? So, getting a pair of lightweight wheels, I bet they'd absolutely love that. Yeah. Being able to just train on race on something that's a bit different and you know, gains a bit more speed or yeah, yeah. or whatever. You know, it's all yeah. you know, it's all up to the rider, isn't it? There. Yeah. And also, you get to see if riders are really into tech or not because they do start to these change two are obviously. Bits. Yeah, obviously, yeah. you know, they like themselves to have mm. a lighter pair of wheels. Now, sticking with wheels or kind of, there's a new Kickstarter project that's just been launched. Well, or a couple of weeks back, I think you first saw it. Yeah, a few months back, I initially yeah. saw it. Yeah. Now it's called Retire, and it's a modular tire system which basically you can add tread and take off tread using a zipper system. It's quite interesting this, isn't it? Because essentially you buy a base tire, it's so like a road going mm. tire, which has the half of a zip on either sidewall. And then presumably you take, or you could do anyway, these other treads that you could just zip onto the tire and change depending on the terrain Crazy. you want to ride on. So, we spoke about this earlier, didn't we? So you can imagine you're riding along on the road and you say, oh, there's some dirty woods over there. I'll tell you what. Shortcut. Yeah, I'll put this new tread on. So out the treads come from your back pocket, put them on, and then what happens? And then you zip those on, you ride through the woods, get to the end of the woods, you end up at a road, you zip those off, and then you're back onto your road tread. Yeah, and there's even studded tires as well. I mean, I think this is it's quite interesting. I'm a little bit skeptical or dubious. I, I can't help but be, and imagine you're riding along and you pull a big old skid, because <laughs> that's what I would do on a mountain bike, for instance, <laughs> because that's all I could do on one, and suddenly that tire tread just comes off and is behind you. But anyway, I doubt that happens. I'm sure they've looked into it. There's probably a different way of zipping them. Um, yeah, it is certainly something different, but... Are we gonna see this? Well, it's only been launched a few days and they've already smashed their funding target wow. by nearly double, so... So, watch this space. Yeah, there's a good chance it could be. Now, finally, this week, there's two new saddles on the scene. First up is one from SkiCon, who traditionally make uh, luggage for cyclists, so bike bags, saddle bags, that kind of thing. They've released a new carbon rail saddle called the Elan. Now, this takes the function and shape of those shorter style saddles, which we're seeing a few road riders take mm. to, aren't we? Uh, so it's probably about five centimeters shorter than a normal saddle. Why would you want that though? Well, it does allow your hips to rotate a little bit extra, so you can release more power and generally be a little bit more comfortable, and comf possibly. Comfort is key, I yeah. think, when you're riding a bike. I think that's interesting. And then from Land Yacht Bikes, 
There is a new saddle as well, which is USB chargeable, mate. What would you need to <laughs> charge your saddle for? Oh, well, it's not really USB chargeable. Oh. A USB uh, does get involved with it, so a USB socket because this is a heat moldable saddle. Oh, wow. So basically, it's a like again, it's got a carbon shell and there's a couple of heat moldable pads in it that your buttocks go on. And you heat it up or you plug it in, which then charges it up and you can then go out riding and it forms to you and your bottom. So I think that's, that's oh, quite wow. interesting that. As long I as think... it's not too hot, because I wouldn't want to get a red bottom. Yeah. But I love all this, how you know bike companies, saddle companies are all trying to push the boat out for that new exciting bit of tech. Yeah. But that's pretty cool, that. Anyway, more tech next week. <laughs> now it's time for the part of the show called oh. Screw Riding Upgrades by Upgrades. But what does that mean exactly then? Well, it means we want to see pictures of your upgrades to your bikes, or maybe it's your turbo training setup, anything bike related, we want to see it. But how do we see it? Well, you need to use the uploader tool, so make sure you use it. It's down there in the description. Send us loads in. And yes. you could win one of these. Woo! A GCN a Workshop apron. It's definitely not a cape, all right? Ollie says it is, but it's not. It's an apron to be used in your workshop when you fix up your bike. So. We've got an announcement, haven't we? Last we week's do. winner, who was it? Last week's winner was Taylor for that Trek transformation. And that was phenomenal. I did have a look at it and that was a really, really epic transformation. Yes. And they smashed out of the park with 85% of the votes. That is a whopping number, isn't it? Yeah. 85%, but well, who have we got this week then? Well, first up, Rue from Oswestry Street in Shropshire. Now, Rue bought the Genesis from eBay for £320 nice. with old Tegra 6700. Everything except the 6600 shifters. Rue upgraded the shifters also from eBay. He then spotted the rather beautiful Chioch Etro frame in an XXL size. He's a big boy, I like Rue. it. Uh, which is perfect for Rue's height. Rue won that for the starting price of £250. And the seller threw in a deader seat post too. Oh. Now, Steel. Rue rebuilt everything on the new frame with new cables, seat and tape. Sold on eBay for 184. So all in, the bikers cost them 650 pounds. That's well, it's a nice looking upgrade that, isn't it? Look at it. Oh, wow. Yes. Oh, wow indeed. Oh, Look at beautiful. the difference. It, that looks really racy now, yeah, doesn't it? it? Does. Before it looked like, well, you know, a nice, don't get me wrong, beautiful bike, but now it, that looks racy, mean. You, nice do, you could definitely race on that, 100%. Yeah, smash it. But Rue, he's up against Jason from Melbourne, Australia. What does Jason have in his locker? Well, Jason found this slightly beaten up old Colnago Superismo frame at a garage sale in Melbourne. After some research, Jason tracked it back to the Belgium national road team of the Ooh. early 90s via the frame wow. number. Top stalking, Jason. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jason went about restoring it to new sandblasted and repainted the frame, airbrushed the original Conargo design, located some Campagnolo, C-Record and Super Record components, added some chamelles. He's done a fair bit of work there. Original 1990s bottle cages, Chinelli swan neck stem and bars, oh, nice. a roll saddle. Well, we've gone from, I don't, not a big huge fan of yellow bikes to be honest, but he's gone to Oh, that. wow. Straight away, it changed out that colour with an eye-popping red. Yeah. And I have to say, that Colnago has really been brought to life there. It has, hasn't it? Elytricy bottle cages. And look, he's even got a photo I love of, that. of a Campagnolo tow clip in the I background. Love that. I'm welling up here, uh, Jason. <sighs> I don't know. But anyway, it's not down to us, is it? The it's viewers not. have to decide. Vote on poll on screen right now. And let us know what you think about the bikes in the comment section. Yeah. Who's gonna win this? And remember as well to leave your bike upgrades using that uploader tool. Yeah, we look forward to seeing all your bikes and all your upgrades. Yeah. Next week, we'll announce the winner. Stay tuned. Right, bike of the week time, and well, we have to announce a winner from last week, first of all. I'm quite excited about this. Yeah, because it was your trek. It was. Up against the trek of Ollie. Uh, yeah. And you're with me today, so this could be, or could not be, rather awkward. So, with a landslide victory of 81% of the votes, it goes to Oliver Bridgewood. And here's Ollie with his acceptance speech. Sorry, mate. What? You must have bribed them. I spent so long on that bike. 
All right. Um, sorry, I can't be in the GCN Tech Studio this week to collect my incredibly prestigious award for winning the bike competition against James. My bike is better though. Uh, I'd like to thank loads of people, my family, Trek for this amazing honor, um, John, because John voted for me. Sorry, James. Oh, thanks, Ollie. It was, uh, yeah, it was a pleasure to announce that. Yeah, pleasure. Anyway, let's move on. Let's yes. move on to this week's, and we're looking at the two World Road Race winners bikes. First up, Alejandro Valverde's Canyon Ultimate CF SLX. Oh, it's a nice Fully bike. kitted out with Super Record. Campagnolo Super Record. Yeah, that? Bora wheels. That's a nice looking bike. Nice looking bike. I do like the colour scheme on that. I tell you what, his saddle is really far forward, isn't it? A slammed far, yeah. far, far forward. Yeah. Gone are the days pushing it right back and a long old stem. He's gone the opposite. <laughs> anyway, who are we to disagree? Uh, it's a winning bike. Yeah, exactly. A world road yeah. race winning bike. <laughs> and that's up against the bike of Anna van der Breggen. And that's the Specialized S-Works Tarmac SRAM Red Grip Good looking set. bike. Lovely looking bike. Mm. Uh, zip wheels and of course disc brake. So who's it going to be? Who are you going to go for? Right, I am going to put the cat among the pigeons and go for that canyon. I think good looking bike, great paint job, awesome group set. I just think it's got the makeup of a world champion. Yeah, and it has, I suppose. <laughs> anyway, you know what to do. It's not down to us to decide. We can't influence you at all. Unlike Ollie did last week, obviously, when he won that. Yeah, obviously he cheated, didn't he? Massive obviously. Is. So, vote up there, top corner. Who's it gonna be? Anna or Alejandro? You Alejandro. Decide. Or Anna. Or Alejandro. It's now time for the bike vault. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! Steady on. Crumbs. Oh, temporarily gone deaf. Right, so the bike vault, in case you don't know, is where we rate your bike either nice or super nice. But how do we do that? Well, you have to submit pictures, images, videos, anything like that of your bike using the uploader tool and explain everything about that bike to us so that we could possibly include it. And we rate it nice or super nice. Yes, we do. I love this. I get so excited. Not by that bell. I don't like it, so I, you're ringing it. Yeah. Tough. Uh, so this week, I've chosen a load of retro bikes because last week we spoke about retro tech, so I thought, why not? Let's do retro week in the bike vault. Yeah, and we've got loads of people getting involved, so thank you for getting involved. So right. First, first up, who have we got? Keith from Brisbane in Australia. Absolutely love it there, Keith. So when I come over, make sure my bed's made nice and comfy, because I'm going to come and stay. <laughs> right, this is Keith's Rosin Record from the mid 80s. Now, he's gone modern and old school. Ooh. He's got a new Campagnolo group set and some old bits on there too. Lovely bit of kit, isn't it? That turbo saddle. Beautiful bike. Great I mean, picture of it. Great picture, yeah. yeah. He's oh, tan sidewalls. You know, the, lee, the bars, they're just perfect, aren't they? Yeah, I've, I've, I know I'm giving that. Yeah, I think that's a great looking bike. What are we giving it? Oh, super nice, obviously. Yeah. Whoa, whoa. God. Sorry, getting excited. He's building it up. Right, next up, Carl from Leicestershire in the UK. This is my all time favourite bike, so it's getting super nice regardless. Uh, Colnago Master Olympic on Campagnolo Record and Chorus. Apparently, this is Carl's first ride on it in 15, 15 years. 15 years. Got it out of the Ooh. loft. Now, it's a beauty. I don't it care handles that, so well that yeah. bike. I don't care that the logos aren't matching on the tires. I just think the colours of it were absolutely beautiful. And anyone mm. who's seen one of those Master Olympics up close knows the detail of the airbrushing on them. I mean, they are. That is a masterpiece of a bike, isn't it? Yeah, that is. It's beautiful. Right. Without yeah. further ado, bring it. Yeah. There it is. Retro week. Love it. David. Next one from David, yeah. Yeah, David Otoxeter in the UK. Easier for him to say. And uh, he's gone for a 1989 Concorde PDM full Durace 7402 group set running a 55 42 chain set and a 1228 8 speed cassette. 55 the, 42? Yeah. Wow. Mate, it's a beauty, right? It's minus Love pedals. Love it, Wall size. It's minus pedals. It, it's a whopper of a bike, to be perfectly Huge. honest. It's a massive old unit, that. That reminds you of Sean Kelly back in the day, just smashing up yeah. those hills, taking bunch sprints. Love them Ginelli bars. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? That yeah, I, I love that dual race as well from back then. 
Yeah, GP4s, did he say? Yeah, he did say GP4s, yeah. New old stocks, they're in perfect condition. Rate it. Oh, well, super nice, of course. Super nice, it is. Even without pedals, it's super nice. Right, next up, Joe. This is Peace Bridge in downtown Calgary, Alberta, that's Canada. Uh, Chinelli Super Corsa, full Campag C record. Delta Groups that hand built the wheels himself. Found a Chinelli reissued saddle too for the build. I bet Ooh. that cost a fair penny. Oh, wow. Oh, look at it. Chrome lugs, chrome uh, chainstay. I pop in lips. red as well. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Matched up Love with the bridge saddle. there. Yeah, it's a nice bike though, mm. isn't it? Nice bike. I actually spent time taking his picture as well. That's pretty cool bit of kit. It's got rec uh, It's got those Delta uh, calipers, sorry. <sighs> Love that old, that old derailleur. Yeah. Rear I'd... derailleur. So cool. Is it super nice or is it nice? I'd personally give it a super nice. Would you? Mm. But then we've given a lot of super yeah, nice, so we've well, got to be a bit yeah, tight. Yeah, it's not about that. But you know, it's, I don't know really. I do know what, actually, yeah, it's super nice because they've got the nice. effort of finding that saddle. Bring it. There it is. Right, final one. Andrew from Penshaw in County Durham. It's a Peugeot 1998 Festina team replica. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Is this, what the, size is the that? Down, it's a small bike, isn't yeah. it? Down tube. This was, a th I've got a feeling they might have 650c wheels. I remember the Peugeot team or Festina team around then, they did experiment with 650c wheels, especially on mountain stages, because it was lighter. They have to have massive, great big chain mm. rings to get the right gearing. Anyway, um, it's pretty much period correct, I think, but the wheels don't think they are. Anyway, you know, that's besides the point. What would you give and it? Put a Phonak water bottle on a Festina bike. I see what he's uh, trying to do there, naughty. Naughty. Uh, <laughs> it's a nice bike, but it's a nice. But do you know what? You, Look at to the be dog. fair, he's managed to get his dog there, sitting down yeah. with its tongue out, right next to the bike. Just saying, super nice, please. It's a super nice. Yeah, bike. super. Nice. Right there we are, the end of the bike vault. So make sure you do get involved. Upload yeah. pictures of your beauties for us to decide on. And thanks for all the pictures that came in this week. Yeah, and yeah we look forward to seeing all yours for next week. Yeah. Now we are at probably, well definitely in fact, the saddest bit of the show. I know, I hate it yeah. when it comes to this know, point. Because we have to say goodbye. We have to say goodbye for, well, well at we... least this week, until next time, I guess. Yeah, but don't worry, we've got a whole heap of great content mm. coming up for you this week. So make sure, if you haven't subscribed, that you do it now. And if you haven't subscribed already, what is wrong with you? <laughs> and make sure you click that bell notification icon so that you get notified each time we upload some content so you don't miss out on anything at all. Yes, and don't forget that if you have enjoyed this video, to give us a thumbs up. And if you want to get your hands on some of these, Pretty cool t-shirts. That's a new one. It's a new one. This is an old one, but it's still available. Still looks new. <laughs> Steady on. Get it on this side of the screen. Yeah. So shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. And now for another great video, this time a bit of maintenance action. How about clicking on him?